Hello friends, welcome to this review looking at Edward's limited edition P51D and some aftermarket accessories from Edward as well. Let's go straight in this review. We'll start off with the actual base kit. Came out a few years ago, but as you can probably guess, this is the subject of an upcoming build, as I do build all the kits I review. Let's have a look at the contents. First of all, a very big book. One, two, three, five bags of sprues and assorted goodies, a miscellaneous item, a poster. If you want to frame that, you've got a big crease down the middle, but anyways, very nice for reference and also some history in the aircraft as well. The history that's covered very in a very detailed manner within the instructions. And of course, your water transfer sticker set. Very big sheet for the numerous markings. Let's uh, open up these bags, have a look at the sprues, and have a look at the instructions. Then we'll just kick off with the instructions. Just to point out as well, this is a Boeing licensed product. Um, obviously, they've had to do that to get around any difficulties with Boeing if they want to sue them or whatever. Start off with, um, there's, this is actually like a book or a magazine rather in terms of, you know, the amount of detail that they have and history about the aircraft. Edward, excellent for researching their subjects significantly. In terms of what we get inside the box, entire layout here as usual are spru sprue trees and also they mark out all the parts that are not for use because they produce so many variants of this actual P51D kit. And in terms of profit pack, we get photo etch parts and we get a mass set. In addition, in the limited edition kit, we get some resin parts for the wheels and hubs. I think the reflector gun sight, something like that anyways. Pretty standard. Um, I think also important thing to call out with Edward as well. The only color call out they use is Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color. So they actually reference the aqueous and the lacquer brands. You can see that the cockpit is, you know, very detailed. They call out each in, if there's a sub step, it's quite well illustrated showing you what you have to do. I would reference these kits as intermediate advanced because of the photo etched but they also do do versions called weekend editions that don't have uh, too much of the um, photo etch included within them this is you know one of the more accurate uh, p51 kits the problems with the well if you can call it a problem with the the tamiya kit is still excellent by all means but they had one of the areas was depicting the the floor properly of the cockpit, which was actually see through. It was just wooden boards on top. So this is a more accurate version if that is really really important to you. And also, there's masses of detail in here, which is the gear bay and spar section here, which is you will see that when we look at the parts in detail as well. Standard construction as usual, fuselage to wing, tail plane, and then also very important to note here, we'll have a look at that again in detail, is that there are numerous call outs for the many, many options that are included within the box of this kit. So do your research before, look beforehand. Of interest here as well is... PE part PE50. For some versions, you place that on the spine, and this serves as a template for you to scribe the correct panel. So, uh, 
you know, you can tell uh, the amount of research that's gone into these kits is beyond, you know, anything that Tamiya does by any means. Why people are constantly saying that Tamiya the best is um, a little bit ridiculous when you see the amount of detail and the amount of care that's gone into these type of kits, which blows away Tamiya in all fronts, quite frankly. But that's my opinion. You may think differently. Here we've got the um, call out here for the masking of the clear parts. Really nice to have uh, masks included. Also, they're die cut as well. And I'll just point this out as well. This is the call out for using the resin parts for the tail wheel there. And of course, there were resin parts for the main landing gear as well. Very comprehensive instruction set as well. What's particularly nice again, Edward, is full color layouts of the multiple options and also an explanation of the history of the particular aircraft that you're depicting. So you can go back through. I mean, uh, even now, I do have a look at the Edward website and just read the instructions, just looking at the history of the actual aircraft. And when we start this project, we're probably going to start right here at the back to choose which aircraft we are going to do. I did mention this is uh, long range Mustangs. These are all the Mustangs that we, well, variants of Mustangs that we used in the Pacific Theater of Operations in the Second World War. Basically, their long range with the drop tanks allowed them to fly all the way to the main islands of Japan as escorts for the B-29 Super Fortresses and also as fighter strike aircraft in their own right. So we're up to L in terms of variants. And again, something very useful here is that the, the Mustang itself, um, areas were natural metal, as in bare metal, aluminium, and also they applied an aluminium lacquer paint. So those, the actual areas where you would have the different tones of paint is called out. That's useful for when it comes to painting. And of course, a very detailed stencil marking guide right at the back. Let's have a look at the parts now. I'm going to follow the same technique that I use to show you a sprue. And then we're going to zoom in, in macro, to show you just how beautiful the detail is. So of course, we've got the upper and lower wing sections, flaps, and parts of the tail plane. And now a macro. You can see the detail, the very fine, detailed and engraved panel lines. In fact, as you rub your finger over the top, you can just barely sort of scratch into it, which is the way that panel lines should look to look more or less in scale for model aircraft. Notice the riveting here on this section here again, really, really well carried out. And also you've got proud rivets as well on this section here. More details, you approach the front section of the fuselage. Part of the tailplane, again, wonderful riveting detail and panel lining. And these parts as well over here are, I believe, the... You can see the stiffeners that are actually proud surface detail. Also, just to point out as well, the ejection ports for the shells for the 50 caliber guns as well. This is the bag with the sprues that were bundled together. As usual, <laughs> parts do tend to fall off. Let's just start off with this one which is the drop tanks and some other details. Note the filler cap 
detail rendered into the molding. Here are the fuselage halves of this very, very beautiful aircraft from the Second World War. I'll bring in macro again, just let me show you the initial layout first. Detail parts of note are gear bay doors with all the correct detail rendered in them, the exhaust stacks, main spar, the plastic included wheels and the actual tires have got a tread pattern but we do have resin ones which again i'll show you in macro several options for i believe is a oil cooler well anyways it's on the side of the fuselage towards the nose some of the engine some of the pilots cockpit detail here on the sidewall this sprue contains the prop and there's several versions of that prop again it looks like two versions or maybe you could say three versions of the actual cockpit console the cockpit sidewall detail Further detailing or options for the pilot's console, different spinners, and more sidewall console detail. And there is the main fuel tank, and there is the pilot's seat. Again, I'll show you in detail. And this sprue looks like the paper drop tank versions. Also, we have HVAR rockets, and also it looks like we have 500 pound bombs. So this is the armament sprue. Let me show you again in macro. Start off showing you the HVAR air launched rockets. Show you some of the detail on these drop tanks. Here are the pilot's instrument console. It should be pointed out here that several options. First of all, we have the plastic injected version of the instruments, which could be painted. Or you could apply a decal on top of that. Or the further option is to use these bare-faced instrument panels and use the photo etch parts to detail them. And it's uh, worth pointing out as well. So only the profi pack versions include the photo etch. So please somebody point out how Tamiya does better than this because they certainly do not in terms of detail. This is much finer detail and I would argue probably more accurate as well. Again, these... Uh, Gear bay doors, just excellent. You can see how they are these pressed aluminium structures there. Well detailed. The actual exhausts are, if I can get them in focus, uh, hollowed out and look good. They look very good actually. Where there has been some kits where these did have sink marks. These ones look really good in terms of the exhaust manifold. I'll show you that compartment there for the gear bay. That sprue with all the lightning holes. And those several versions of the oil cooler grill. Very fine details here, I believe, for various fittings, I believe, on the landing gear. Let's just show you this hero part in detail with the amazingly fine riveting, texturing. And here's that area here where you've got the option for the various grills for the oil cooler. 
outstanding. I would argue probably better than the Tamiya 32 scale kit which I have built in terms of the fine riveting detail. Here's the fillet for the tail. There's two different options for the tail. I think these are all filleted, but I uh, need to double check that. Just check inside and there isn't actually any detail on the interior face. But of course we have got multiple parts to make up what will be the sidewall console. I'm just showing you now macro the photo etch parts that are included in the P51D kit with the instruments and if you look carefully you'll be able to see that the bezels have got a gloss finish to them for the instruments. Maybe not as good as the Quinta ones but still very very good and in 48 scale perfectly fine and again See if you guys disagree, but Tamiya don't include anything like this in their kits in terms of coloured photo etch detail at a price point which is, I think, unbeatable. There's one further fret of PE. It's marked out as the very long range. And I found out that these are actually hardening points for the wing in order to mount these larger HVAR rockets seems to be a feature of these Pacific Mustangs. Just a note, this is the die cut mask. Not showing it to you very well, but we will cover that during the build. Worth pointing out as well, that you get a separate Ziploc bag for the clear transparent parts, which have got several options of uh, glazing for the main canopy cowling. Also, you've got mirrors, the gun sight, identification lights, all on this one sprue, crystal clear. Of course, make sure you choose the right canopy option. And of course, this clear bag keeps everything protected. Worth pointing out, this is, has this become, I don't know if this has become unattached. But anyways, within the bag is also this. This is the actual identification lights that mount into the wing. Okay, these are the brass in wheels and tires that can be purchased separately, but are included within this limited edition kit. Here are the covers, hubcaps, tail wheel, obviously flawless molding in addition we've got i believe these look like i think they may well be the rocket mounting hard points on the wings now i'll show you the decal sheet which is very large very comprehensive for all those different markings let's uh just give you an overall picture. It's still in the protective wrapper. Let me unwrap this and show you in the macro. As you can see, really nice colors. But also you sort of notice that they are a little bit flat in appearance. And also there's some sort of remnants on here as well. Just as I've removed this protective film, maybe that's a residue. And then, of course, there is this ongoing talk about the decals being having an extra coating on top that could be removed. And we'll investigate that when we do the build, of course. Of note, of course, we've got this uh, really, really nice uh, pin-up nose art. Stars and bars. And as you can sort of see, it has got that flat sort of film on top of it it's as if it's nearly cloudy in appearance and as i mentioned as well we have got an instrument panel decal if that's your preference for decals 
and very comprehensive stencils. Okay, finally, a bit of a gimmick, but nevertheless, tie pin is included with this interesting design, which is the nose art of this aircraft flown by Major Tap. Just see it there. You could probably get away with that. I suppose you wouldn't get many questions. But uh, just sort of interesting that they throw that into the box, yeah? Maybe just to make you feel that you did buy a limited edition kit, not only in name, but also <laughs> with what you receive in terms of the contents. So that's the basic kit. Let's have a look at these aftermarket parts now. Okay, first set we're going to look at is this. Brasson P51D Hamilton Standard Propeller. Now, I bought this quite a long time ago, and I can't honestly remember if it's totally compatible. I need to check, obviously, with all these different versions of propeller. I have to be careful to see that I match this prop with um, what I'm going to use in terms of the P51 I'm going to depict. And the reason I chose to get this aftermarket kit is mainly, I'll show you in a second, is that we've got the Propeller Boss, which is going to complement that resin engine quite nicely. So we've got the individual blades here. And these are obviously flawless once again, perfectly cast. Just need to be careful in separating them off the uh, pouring stub. And they're very, very nice and thin, rather delicate. Uh, in terms of that, that is a cleanup. I don't know, how, that's obviously something to do with the casting, but that needs to be just shaved off, that little spike on top. We'll just check this out. I believe this might be a jig for forming the propeller. This is certainly the rear of the spinner. And as I mentioned before, this is the main part. This boss here, which will look quite nice with a engine. You do get also a very, very small PE sprue part. These could be just punched out of card quite obviously, but they have included them because Edouard does not let you down in terms of detail. It doesn't tend to take any shortcuts. Very quickly, here's the instruction sheet from Brassin showing obviously how this is meant to be constructed. It shows you the parts and here's instruction. As I expected, this larger piece here is actually a jig which sets the blade of the prop at the right angle as you build it so you place in the boss into there putting a blade putting a blade putting a blade very simple very straightforward should have pointed out r4 there it's telling you the join there between which obviously is the front part of the fuselage of the p51 and it actually has one very small shaft, the propeller shaft itself is a separate resin part and the PE part of which there are two is just going right on top of the spinner there, right at the end of the spinner. What's the note here as well, worth pointing out, is the interior detail of the spinner. So in terms of you know, you want to make a really nice little aircraft maintenance diorama. This is a little on the side of the aircraft being maintained is just uh, excellent. I mean, try to scratch build that. You can 3D print it, but to scratch build it, I would, I would not be able to do it anyways. <laughs> so let's have a look at the, uh, the resin engine now. Yeah, so it's, it's quite, <laughs> it's worth pointing out as well, these boxes are really sturdy cardboard which is important for um, resin parts the last thing you want is uh, to find out that when you receive 
aftermarket parts, which again I should point out are very expensive actually. To find them all broken upon receipt would be uh, very disappointing to say the least. As you can see, quite an extensive manual for what will form a kit within a kit. And I think we'll start off with the instructions. As we can see the layout of what would be the constructed engine. And there are the multiple parts making up the resin Merlin engine. Composed of brass and resin. Bra uh, brassin, brassin as they call it. A little bit difficult to lay this out, but let's push this to one side. Okay, the manual is not the friendliest. So we've got one and two there, but you can see it's on one sheet. So you just need to separate all these out. And I have a feeling they're printed on both sides. Obviously, take your time with this. Already I can tell you there's 32 steps in the instructions to build this engine. That is the amount of detail we have with this. It's also important to note as well, we've got call outs for the different wires that are required. And it actually tells you how long each one should be. It tells you the diameter is 0 0.2 millimeters. And it tells you the individual lengths of the wires now is the wire included we'll find out in a second when i go into those parts again we've got paint call outs as well throughout and again as it's edward they only reference mr hobby mr mr color but they actually have got the the name of the color as well i should have told you that earlier they've got black silver whatever you guys will be able to work it out if you don't use that paint Okay, so the first step's built with the construction of the block. Then we've got the supercharger going on. Oh, sorry, supercharger's already attached. Um, got the water pump. Various detail. It's pointing out the wiring with a different color as you go through all this. So although it's many, many steps... What they're doing is they're breaking down and showing you individually where all these little small details go on. And bear in mind, this is 48 scale. It's going to be very impressive. Have I built one of these engines before? Yes, I have. I built one before for a Spitfire and uh, it didn't go too well, <laughs> to be honest. I built the engine quite well, but I had problems with mounting it. So... What I would like, actually at this point, is your feedback, guys, because this is an upcoming project. Do you want a walkthrough and talk through on the build? Which I will cover on my Patreon, but do you want my voiceover as I construct this engine? And then maybe we'll just do a music video for the rest of the aircraft. I'm just showing you this generally, just showing the level of detail that is covered within the instructions. Very important is this. This is the most important part, obviously. Here, we need to do some alteration of the plastic parts, and it's showing you which parts to delete. So we need to do straight away, the first thing that we need to do is modify that fuselage and you're best off doing that at the very first point. Not doing it when you've built the fuselage, as it shows you here, but on the bare parts there. So this is crucial as well. We're taking out a good chunk of the lower part of the fuselage wing section as well. So this part's going to come quite weak once you remove that section there. Also pointing out as well that the plastic parts that obviously you're cutting away there are replaced by resin parts here as they would be in this maintenance type configuration. Okay, let's have a look at the resin in detail. Let's open up this first bag. 
and have a look at all these parts. Resin, not the easiest thing to deal with. Let's be honest about it. Mainly in terms of adhesion, because you have to use super glues. And super gluing is not fun all the time. I am surprised. If you actually have a look at this part, it's translucent. It's that thin. It has got amazing detail. But it is so thin. It is crispy thin. Which is the way it has to be to be in scale. To pose the air. Previously, Edouard did include plastic engines in some of their kits. Notably the FW190s. And with their later kits, like this P51D, they don't even attempt to do plastic engines. Instead, they give you these resin upgrade parts that are expensive. So, question is, is it worth it? When I'm looking at all this detail here, and I realize I've got basically a whole detailed kit to make in resin, I think it is well worth it, but they are expensive, sometimes more expensive than the actual base kit. This is really, really nice part here. We've got the um, exhaust manifold, hollowed out exhausts, and the mounting points as well onto the actual block of the engine as well, all undercut, etc. That's why things are done in resin to get that detail, or now in 3D printing, we can also achieve this sort of detailing. Here you can see, this is part of a framework that needs to, this is translucent in nature, but this is this all needs to be cleaned out of here. Very, very difficult operation to do without damaging the part, which is extremely, it's flexible, but it's still brittle, like a quick, um, flex of the parts will snap, snap them. So you just need to be really, really careful, but a challenge. Crucial parts here, the engine bearers, the engine supports, again, with all that detail. The problem is, is getting the alignment right to make sure that the engine sits in properly. That is the problem I had previously when I built one of these kits. Here's a supercharger. Again, all undercut detail. Pretty amazing. This bag, mainly composed of the smaller parts, the plumbing of the engine itself. Again, care needs to be taken on removing all these parts. Razor saw tends to be the best. In some places, you'll be able to use your sprue cutters. Even if you do snap them, they tend to snap cleanly. They don't um, get distorted, so you can super glue them together. But it's a delicate operation. It takes a lot of time. And dare, dare I say, it takes a little bit of skill to build in resin. It's very, it's very much more different from plastic as well in terms of the joins tend to be butt joins. There isn't these nice location points where parts can be placed together and liquid glue ran in between them. So you need to get your mating surfaces, you know, pretty much bob on. In this single bag here, we have got the Merlin block, the famous V12, with some wiring details well on there. Looks quite odd, but you won't be able to see that. I think you're meant to, sorry, get that in focus clean up in between these areas here, which you can probably do. I'll try and do it. This big block here, this pouring stub needs to come off. That needs to be done really nice and tight. And there she is. I'll just show you the final part, which is a PE fret. Single PE fret. It's sort of the linkages, mechanisms. Of course, very, very fine brass. Just the final thing to point out is that, as I saw this wise here, 0 0.2 millimeters, not included within the kit. And also looking back in the instructions, you need various differing diameters of wire, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6s, whatever. 
um, lead wire is probably the best to do this in because of its malleability. So that is very worth, you know, a point worth noting. With the amount of detail and complexity on this engine, uh, you could choose not to wire it, but why would you not when you have so much detail? Anyways, that is the review of the aftermarket and the resin accessories for this uh, limited edition P51D. Hope you enjoy the review. Leave your comments, ask any questions. Don't forget to look at our Patreon. We've got, we've got a growing community, and this will be fully vlogged on there where I explain all aspects. But in any, any case, uh, this is the bet, and see you soon.